Welcome to this tutorial on adding filters and slicers to pivot tables. This tutorial assumes you know the basics on how to create a pivot table. In this tutorial, we will be covering how to add filters, slicers, and pivot charts to an existing pivot table. If you're not sure how to create a pivot table, please review my earlier video, How to Create a Pivot Table in Excel. The link is in the description box below. Let's start by looking at a data set containing 50 student grades. You can see here the data collected includes not just the grades on the exam, but also the major, number of hours studied, overall GPA, age, gender, and so on. First, let's apply the pivot table tool to this data set. To do this, first position your cursor in A1, then go to the Insert tab and click Pivot Table. Here's the Insert tab, and here we have Pivot Table. Make sure the area highlighted in the table range box is the data you want to use. In our case, it's referencing A1 through J51, which includes all the rows and columns we want to use. You can change this range if you want at this point. Let's leave it since that's what we want, so let's just click OK. A new worksheet called Sheet 2, by default, will appear. We have in the pivot table fields all of our label headings. You can see here student, major, grade on exam. These were the headings for my data set. If you're doing statistical analysis, this is what we call variables. Let's drag major to the rows area. And let's drag student status to the columns area. Now you can see the pivot table is starting to take shape. We have four majors as rows and two columns for full-time and part-time student status. There are no values there yet, so we need to put something quantitative in the values area. We could analyze the data by grades, by number of hours worked, by credits earned. Let's use grades as the data values. Drag and drop the grade headings to the value areas. As soon as I did that, you saw the numbers were inserted into the pivot table. But those are strange numbers. Actually, those numbers are the sum of the grades. If you add up all of the grades for accounting, finance, management, and marketing students, you will get 3,948 as the total, or sum, of all the grades, which isn't what we want. We really want average. So now to get averages, click on the drop-down box where it says sum of grades over here in the values area. And let's go to the last choice here where it says field settings, value field settings. Click. And you can see highlighted is sum. That's not what we want. We want average. So let's click on average and then click OK. Uh, before I click OK, I want to change the number format so that it's two decimal places. By default, the numbers are formatted as general. Let's click on number, and here we can change the number of decimal places. Two decimal places is what I would like, and so I'm going to click OK. And now when it computes the average, instead of having a floating decimal point, it'll give it to me to two decimal places, so I click OK. So now you can see the overall grade average across all the majors is 78.96. Now let's say we want to look at the data by gender. We could do this by adding a filter to the data to break it down by gender. To do this, click and drag gender to the filter box. So here we have gender, and here we have the filter box. So let's click and drag gender down to the filter box. And then up here, we have gender added as a filter. Now let's look at the drop-down box. Right now, it says all, which means both males and females. You can change that to look at only the data for females or only the data for males. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens when we click on the drop down box. We see the choices are female and male, and I can choose just female and click OK, and then you will see the data has changed to only display the averages across each major and by student status, but only for the females. And you can see here at the top it says gender female. Another way of filtering data is to use the slicer tool in Excel. Let's take away the gender filter by dragging it out of the filters area. 
Okay, now we're back to the way the table looked before we added gender as a filter. Now let's use a slicer instead. Slicers are actually easier and faster to use than filters. Let's see how it's done. First, click on any cell in the pivot table. By the way, when we click on a cell, let's say 90.14, remember we formatted it to two decimal places? Watch what happens in the formula bar when I click on 90.14. You see all of the decimal points are displayed here because really all the decimal places are still there. It's just I wanted to format it to display only two decimal places. So the first step to use slicers is to click on any cell in the pivot table. Now go to the Analyze tab. I'm there already. If you're not there, click on the Analyze tab. And now let's click Insert Slicer. A list of choices comes up with the various headings. And so we can click on Major, Grade Point Average, Gender, Hours Working, Student Status, anything we want to use as a filter. But in this case, instead of just looking at gender by itself, we can look at various slices of the data or filters. So let's say I click on, I already have major and full-time, part-time. Let's put um, hours studied. Let's click on overall GPA. Let's click on age and let's click on gender. All right, let's click OK. And here we have all of the choices that we could use to slice or filter the data. Now let's say I want only the males this time. I can click on male and now female is deselected. You can see male is highlighted. When it's in blue it's highlighted that means it's selected. If I select female then it's just female. <clears throat> and we had that before 87.80. 81.20 is the overall average for females. If I click on male 76.72 for overall for males. Now I can clear the filters by clicking this box here and then it highlights both and so it's not filtered by male or by female. Let me click and drag this out of the way. And let's take a look at uh, choosing by age. Let's say it makes a difference. Let me see. My youngest student was 19 years old. My oldest student according to this is 28 years old. Um, let's say I want to just see how, um, how the 19-year-olds did. Okay, their overall average was 83.60. Um, you can also see here that I don't have part-time students at that age category. See, no value. That means there are no students in accounting that are part-time age 19. Uh, we only have in management the 19-year-old or a 19-year-old, only in management. Okay, let's click 20 years old and see what happens. So ni at 19, the average was 83.60. At 20, the average was 81.50. At 21, the overall average is 74.70. Now, what happens if I want to filter the data by age, but include multiple ages. I can click here where it says multi-select and now I can choose 19, 20, 21, 22. Let's say I want to stop at that. So here I have the 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds all selected. Okay, I'm going to clear those filters. Let's take a look at overall GPA. Now I would expect overall GPA to make a greater difference in grade point average. Um, let's see, we have a 2.0 Again, the overall average for the class is a 78.96. Let's see if a student has a 2.0 grade point average. Uh, that is a 78, a 55, 2.3. I'm going to multi-select at this point. So I want to see uh, grade point averages below, let's say below a 2.33. So let's multi-select all of the grade point averages below 2.33 or below. So now I filtered out all of the grade point averages 2.33 and below and you can see the grade point average and you can see the average on the exam is 64.75. That's much lower than the class average. I'm going to clear the filters and let's scroll down to the highest grade point average. Let's see, we have some 
We have students here with 3.85, 3.86, 3.88, 3.91. So let's multi-select those and see what happens to the class average. Remember, the class average is a 78.96. So let's see if we have students who have 3.85 or greater. We have 3.85. Click multi-select. 3.86, 3.88, 3.91. And you can see the grade point average if we just select the students who have an overall grade point average GPA of 3.85 or higher, that's a very high grade point average, they scored very high on this exam, which makes sense. All right, let me clear those filters. And let's see if we can take a look at the data by number of hours studied. And here we have students who studied one hour through students who studied nine hours. Remember, the average on the exam was 78.96 if we don't apply any filters. Let's see if we have students who studied only one hour. Their average grade was 58.50. If a student studied nine hours, their average grade was 98. So it seems to be from this that the more hours you study, the higher your grade is on the exam. That's it on using filters and slicers. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned something.